It's great to be back here in Luzerne County with my governing partner, Governor Josh Shapiro, uh, who gave me the awesome responsibility of leading the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. Uh, and I think that should send a message to all of you how serious we take public safety in the Shapiro Davis administration, that the Lieutenant Governor is leading public safety efforts for our administration. Uh, I'm so grateful that the Governor and I have partners like Representative Haddock and Representative Pashinsky who are tireless advocates for increasing public safety dollars in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. And I know with their leadership we're going to get this across the finish line come June. But I also want to recognize the hard work of your mayor and your district attorney and your police chief. They work day in and day out on the ground as partners to the governor and I to make sure people in Luzerne County both are safe and feel safe in their communities. I also want to thank survivors like Kathy who've turned their pain into purpose and who have really showed us how to be strong advocates to end gun violence in our communities. Thank you for being with us today. I've been working on this issue for nearly two decades, and as Lieutenant Governor and as Chair of the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, we're working every day to make every Pennsylvania community safer. To attack the epidemic of gun violence, we need to take a comprehensive approach that addresses the root causes, things like lack of opportunity, mental health, substance abuse issues. We're also investing in community-based organizations that are doing evidence-based violence prevention work day in and day out at the grassroots level. And we're also supporting our law enforcement agencies to help them do the difficult job they've been tasked with every single day. In the past six months, we've provided more than $2 million in grants to help more than 50 agencies recruit and train highly qualified candidates to fill more than 400 vacant positions here in Pennsylvania. We're also going to provide up to $10 million in grants for local law enforcement agencies to upgrade their data collection and reporting systems because we know that police departments need more robust, real-time information to deal with the epidemic of gun violence in our communities. And we need to put more resources into gun violence investigation and prosecution here in Pennsylvania so local law enforcement can increase their clearance rates and get truly dangerous criminals off our streets. Every community in the state is dealing with the epidemic of gun violence here in Pennsylvania. This isn't just a Wilkes-Barre problem or a Philadelphia problem or a Pittsburgh problem. It's a Pennsylvania problem, and it's uniquely an American problem. But it's a problem that we can and must do something about. And the proposed investments in our budget would be an important step to making all of our communities safer. And I know with the help of the folks standing here and in this room and our allies in Harrisburg, we are going to make Pennsylvania communities truly safer. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Toothill, uh, who's been a starch advocate uh, on this issue. Thank you for being with us today. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Lee Tuthill, and I am a wounded survivor of gun violence. March 7, 1972, I wonder if you know what you were doing. I know what I was doing. I was walking home from North Pocono High School and walking up the snowy road to my parents' home. And I heard a voice that said, Kathy, come here. I turned around, and I saw that it was a boy that I had dated briefly the year before, but had not seen him for a year. Um, I didn't want to date him. They didn't like his politics or his personality. So there was no point. Um, however, I guess he didn't feel that way because he had a gun and he said, come here or I'll shoot. And he started shooting. Um, I was shot 12 times with a 22 caliber rifle, six times in my legs, four times in my abdomen, and two times in my left arm. I had a broken hip, broken arm, and numerous internal injuries from, from the bullets. Um, he did at one point come up to me and said, have you had enough or do you want more? And we went back to reload. And at that time, a neighbor of mine came around, and he had heard the screaming and the gunshots. 
and he wondered what was going on. And fortunately, the boy surrendered the gun to my neighbor, who didn't have a gun. He just had his own courage. Um, it was a horrible experience. I had wonderful doctors, that's why I'm here today. I have to say that recovering from gun violence is a lifelong process. I had a real hard time. Um, there was no Victims Advo Advocacy Act back in 1972. Um, and so we were kind of left to our own devi devices in my family. My family was devastated. And um, we had to go through the, the court system. Fortunately, he pleaded guilty, so we didn't have a trial. However, what happened was he was sentenced to 23 months in the county jail because his lawyer didn't want to mark the boy with a prison sentence. So, over the years, I have I've done okay. I was a drug and alcohol counselor. I worked and got my master's degree from Marywood University in psychology. And I did drug and alcohol counseling until I retired. Once I retired, I decided I needed to do something with all that, that energy. And I decided that I needed to help other people who had been through similar experiences. But I didn't know anybody who had been through an experience like that. And so one day I saw a bunch of orange t-shirts and people were, people wearing them were cleaning up a, uh, a walkway in, um, in Scranton. Scranton has a lot of walks. And I asked questions, I met people, and I found out it was Moms Demand Action, and they were all about sensible gun legislation. So I joined, and I became a, a fellow of Every Town Survivor Network. And I met people who had been through things like me. I had met people that were struggling with survival. And I'm grateful that these organizations are available for people like me. I'm so glad to hear that there will be money available to help the prosecution and helping people like me people who have been victims of gun violence and who are now survivors. I'm grateful to hear that our, our governor has proposed new things in his budget for, for crime victims and, and for, <clears throat> pardon me, and to reduce gun violence in our state. And with that, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce our governor Josh Shapiro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your strength. And thank you for speaking out for all to hear your story so that we can hopefully use that to motivate all engaged to reduce gun violence in our communities and to always stand with our victims of gun violence. So we thank you very, very much for being here. Please. We are, of course, here today, back in Wilkes-Barre, back in Luzerne County, and for me, back in this beautiful, stunningly beautiful courthouse, because we want to come together, Democrat and Republican alike, and say that we're here to take back our communities, say that we are here to make sure that our communities are safer, say that we are going to deliver for people like Kathy and other victims of gun violence across this Commonwealth, and say that we are committed to making sure that there are fewer Kathys, fewer victims of gun violence here in Luzerne County and across this Commonwealth. I want to say uh, a moment um, about Luzerne County. 
and my affinity and affection for it. Your fine DA mentioned um, how thankful he was that I'm here in Luzerne County uh, and not forgetting it, notwithstanding the vast, large swath of land that makes up the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I want you to know that every day when I go in my office, I'm privileged to sit in the governor's office as your 48th governor of this great Commonwealth. And sitting at my desk behind me is the first map ever commissioned by the House of Representatives for our first governor, Governor Thomas Mifflin. And I want you to know that Luzerne County took up damn near one third of the space of the <laughs> Commonwealth of Pennsylvania way back when. So Mr. District Attorney, uh, I care a lot about Luzerne County today, but your presence on that map reminds me of Luzerne County every single day. And the other reason I wanted to be here, not only to highlight this issue, but to highlight the way in which Luzerne County leaders work together. The DA referenced that he's a Republican standing with Democrats. This is a community that knows how to come together to get stuff done, which is the mantra of our administration and the way of life here in Luzerne County. And so I want to thank you all for leading by example all across Pennsylvania. And I want to thank all who joined us here today for coming out. Representative Haddock, I would note that one person clapped when she heard the word prothonotary up there. She's a big fan of that prothonotary's office. There you go. But we're, of course, gathered here today in, in common purpose uh, to say that we do not accept the unacceptable levels of gun violence in our communities. The Lieutenant Governor and I have visited far too many communities that have been shattered by gun violence. And as he correctly noted, they are communities all across this Commonwealth. I've hugged and sat with too many families who have an empty chair at their dinner table, and I've spoken with far too many Pennsylvanians who've seen the trajectory of their lives change as a result of a bullet. And I'm here to tell you, it does not have to be this way. This work, of course, is not new to me. I've worked to address gun violence and make our community safer for many, many years, and it has been a top priority for me. When I served as your Attorney General, my team fought successfully to close the ghost gun loophole, but as you heard the District Attorney note, we still have more work to do in that space. We implemented, together with lawmakers, the Safe to Save program to give students an anonymous portal to report things that made them feel unsafe at school. Together, my team in the Attorney General's office arrested 330 gun traffickers during my time as your Attorney General. We took 3,200 guns off our streets. And too often times we know illegal guns and illegal drugs go hand in hand. And so when I was Attorney General, we arrested over 8,100 drug dealers and seized 3.2 million doses of heroin and over 4 million doses of the lethal fentanyl. We worked closely with our law enforcement partners at the local, state, and federal level to get dangerous criminals off our streets, to keep guns out of the hands of those who shouldn't have them, and to enforce the laws of Pennsylvania without fear and without favor. In fact, I want you to know this isn't the first time I've been in this courthouse or standing right by these steps. As Attorney General, I worked closely with now judge, then district attorney, uh, uh, Stephanie Salvantis, and I'm proud that we've been able to continue that relationship with DA Sangwil Duce. Together, we have worked to improve lives here in Luzerne County and make people safer. These local law enforcement leaders, they work incredibly hard, often in very dangerous conditions to prevent violence, to hold criminals accountable, and to keep our communities safe. I saw that work firsthand here in Luzerne County, where everyone came together, your chief of police and others, to make sure that the citizens of this community were protected. And what's clear to me, both as Attorney General and now as your governor, is that we need a well-funded, multi-pronged approach in order to reduce gun violence across our communities. We have to invest in law enforcement, and we have to invest in our communities to create safer neighborhoods towns and cities. And as your governor, I'm doing just that. Last year, the Shapiro-Davis administration in our budget 
delivered $40 million for gun violence prevention all across Pennsylvania. That was $10 million more than had been done previously. Dollars that went directly to the community, to church organizations and civic groups, focused on keeping guns out of the hands of those who shouldn't have them, focused on saving lives. This year, I want to more than double that investment with another $100 million to reduce gun violence here in Luzerne County, in Wyoming County, and all across Pennsylvania. That includes $37.5 million for the gun violence investigation and prosecution program that helps local leaders like DA Sengal Doce continue to do their important work. You heard him reference this before. The Luzerne County District Attorney's Office received over $600,000 in state grants through this initiative, allowing them to hire a full-time detective, an assistant district attorney, and prosecute more gun crimes in our communities, while also giving them the flexibility to purchase more equipment and expand their training. We must equip our law enforcement with the tools and resources they need to successfully prosecute these crimes in our communities. At the same time, we have continued to invest into community-based initiatives that work every day to prevent violence before it happens. Initiatives that help address mental health and create opportunity to put our young people on a different path. I want to give a special thanks to Lieutenant Governor Austin Davis. You heard him reference that he serves at my appointment as chairman of the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. District Attorney Peters and your local DA here understand the importance of PCCD. And under his leadership, he's driven out over $100 million in initiatives to reduce violence in our communities. And he's going to continue to focus on investing in law enforcement and investing in our communities as we go forward. All told, we're seeking to invest $100 million in these initiatives to help our district attorneys and support those communities that are doing this important work. I also want to note that this is on top of the historic investments we made in law enforcement last year, adding 400 new state troopers to our ranks. And this year, I'm coming back to Representative Eddie Day Pashinsky, Representative Haddock, Senator Flynn, and others, and asking for 400 more state troopers and additional resources for municipal police departments all across Pennsylvania. We believe in investing in law enforcement in the Shapiro Davis administration. And we believe in making and keeping commitments to people like Kathy. You know, we've lost over 2,000 Pennsylvanians last year to gun violence in our communities, including 173 young people. It doesn't have to be this way. And we can do something about it, working together working with a well-funded, multi-pronged approach from the community to a district attorney's office to making sure those who put the uniform on and run toward danger every day have the tools and resources and the person power that they need to go out and do these work. Look, this is common sense stuff. Common sense investments to make our communities safer common sense investments that make a real difference in people's lives. We've begun to make those investments. And I want to personally thank Representative Eddie Day Pashinsky and Representative Haddock for their incredible work to get these resources across the finish line. Governing is not easy, especially in the environment we are in. I'm the only governor in the entire nation with a divided legislature. The Senate led by Republicans, the House led by Democrats. For us to get anything done, it's got to be bipartisan and it's got to be common sense. And these two gentlemen have led the way on the floor of the House of Representatives to make it so. My budget overall proposes to invest in common sense things, economic development, education, and public safety. And I want you to know that right now, at this moment, Pennsylvania is sitting on a $14 billion budget surplus. $14 billion is a whole lot of money. That's $14 billion that the politicians over time have taken from the taxpayers and squirreled away in some bank account in Harrisburg. I don't think that there should be political points scored in saving money in Harrisburg. 
I think instead we need to invest it in the good people of Pennsylvania. And so my budget proposes investments in education, economic development, and public safety. It also proposes to cut taxes and cut costs, and not raising any taxes either. And if the legislature, just for argument's sake, were to come together and adopt my budget as is, I know there'll be some give and take, but just for argument's sake, if they adopted my budget as is, complete with these public safety investments, we would still have an $11 billion surplus left over, and we'd cut taxes, cut costs, and make critical investments here in Luzerne County and all across Pennsylvania. Now's the time to step up and get something done. Thank you for your applause up there. Now is the time to step up and get something done. I want to note as well that it's not just about dollars and cents. It's about common sense legislation that's going to keep us safe. The House of Representatives last year, with the votes of Representative Pashinsky and Representative Haddock and others, passed two critically important bills that are supported by law enforcement and large majorities of Democrats and Republicans from all across Pennsylvania to create extreme risk protection orders and to establish universal background checks in Pennsylvania. The rationale behind these bills is to both protect law-abiding citizens and their Second Amendment rights and make sure that guns do not get in the hands of criminals and juveniles and those who aren't legally permitted to have them. Common sense, supported by law enforcement, passed by these guys. And so when I said we need a multi-pronged approach, it's making these critical investments and it's passing these important bills. And now is the time for us to make that happen. I came here today to Luzerne County, came back to these steps, came back to stand with the district attorney of this great county and leaders from across a political spectrum to thank Luzerne County for having your act together for being great leaders across the Commonwealth, and to call on you to join us in investing in public safety today, to call on you to join us in coming together around common sense proposals that are gonna keep our communities safe. I know enough to know as your former Attorney General, together with these law enforcement leaders, is that there's not one thing we need to do to make our communities safe. There's a whole lot of things we need to do, and together, that's exactly what we're doing and what we propose to do. So thank you for having me and the Lieutenant Governor and the others with us today. And we look forward to answering any questions from the media. Your DA has agreed to take all the questions, so I'll step aside and leave the floor to him. Thank you all very, very much.